side. Today we're talking about the the best steels for bushcrafting and in my experience what kind of steels and sometimes what kind of blades to look for when you're talking about picking an amazing bushcrafting and or even survival knife for all around bushcrafting whether you're in Alaska, the lower 48 or another country. Let's jump right into it. Okay guys, hopefully the mosquito noises aren't too bad. I try to do my best at shooing them away, but they are mercilessly attacking my camera and me. So hopefully it's not too terrible, but I film in real world conditions, so there's that. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be breaking down my four favorite steels for bushcrafting. And while not all these knives are representative of maybe the knife that I would choose for that steel, these all are representative of the steel that they are. So, you know, you have CPM 3V01 tool steel, CPM S35 VN, and good old 5160. So I'm going to break this down into the two non-super steels and then the two super steels and talk about why these are my favorite bushcrafting steels. Okay, so for the sake of the common man, we're going to talk about the non-super steels first. And the primary reason why we're going to talk about these first is these are additionally the cheaper steels. So it's not necessarily saying that either of these two knives are cheap, though I think the RTAC is pretty affordable. Um, but rather that these steels can be had on many different knives for reasonable prices. So your super steels are definitely going to come with a higher cost inherently because they are super steels. Uh, so let's talk about the plain ones. Let's talk about non-super steels. So the first one of these is going to be O1 tool steel. Now O1 tool steel is one of my favorites for bushcrafting because it is a very resilient steel. It's essentially like an upgraded 1095 if you will. Now this is a little bit more expensive than a 1095 but it does like I said feature or kind of ease an upgraded 1095 steel and it does rust at the same kind of level so its rust resistance is reasonably low that's why this one is blued but even some of my other O1 tool steel knives that aren't blued you know have a pretty good patina to them and that's pretty unavoidable because these steels are high carbon that being said O1 tool steel holds an edge longer than 1095 but still holds an edge for a very long time and is very easy to field sharpen and reasonably easy to care for once again so long as you are keeping it rust free you really shouldn't have too much of a problem with o1 tool steel and it should serve you very well overall this is a steel that i really do love like i said i have multiple knives in this steel i definitely believe in o1 and i think it is a very awesome steel like I said it's basically an upgrade to 1095 so if you like 1095 high carbon then you're gonna love O1 tool steel and it is like I said just better edge retention and still with the same reasonable ease to sharpen so that is O1 tool steel and it can be found on a wide variety of bushcrafting knives spider co put it in its bushcrafting knives LT Wright and battle horse knives use this uh, steel pretty 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 frequently and so it is a reasonably easy steel to come across if you're looking for it okay so now on <laughs> to the next uh, steel now of course this is my RTAC 2 so this probably isn't the best bushcrafting knife I don't know what your style of bushcraft is so maybe this is what you're looking for but 5160 is a spring steel you'll commonly see it in a lot of machetes and larger knives like this my buck thug is also in 5160 but there are smaller knives uh, back when Buck was making the kind of line of the the hoodlum, the thug, and the punk. The punk was a, I believe, six-inch blade made out of 5160, and there are a handful of smaller, more reasonably sized survival and bushcrafting knives made of 5160. The biggest reason I love 5160, though it does have a poorer edge retention than 1095 by a little bit, is that it is a spring steel. So when it 
And what that means is that you lose some in edge retention, but you get a lot more in shock resistance. So if you're batoning, if you're using that blade in any hard manner, your blade is more likely to roll than it is to crack or chip or just straight up break. Not to say that 5160 can't break because all steel is hardened to a point. So if you bend it far enough or if you try hard enough, you will get it to snap. But 5160 is generally a very hard steel to snap, crack, or break in general because it is springy. So it has some degree of spring to it and it is going to bounce back and it's more likely to roll or bend than it is to actually break or crack. So that is what I love about 5160 and like I said it's a little bit harder to find uh, smaller blades made of 5160 but you can and usually because 5160 is a more affordable steel we can usually find blades in this price or in 5160 in a reasonable price range so usually under 100 to around 150 dollars is where you're going to find a lot of your 5160 blade price points so it's a pretty good affordable steel and a very resilient very tough steel even in something like this rtac 2. Okay, so now let's talk about super steels. Now, like I said, super steels were not mentioned first because they usually bring a higher cost. As a kind of metric, this knife is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This knife is the Legome by LT Wright. And they're about the same size, about the same general shape and everything. The Legome is about $170 to $160, whereas this Bark River Knives Bushcrafter made in 3V is about 260 so you're seeing nearly a hundred dollar increase to go from something like 01 tool steel to CPM 3V. Now the biggest advantage to 3V is that it has much much better edge res edge retention. Now this does kind of bring in the factor that when we walk away from steels that have a lot of high carbon in them, uh, the high carbon steels tend to roll instead of crack or bend um, or crack or break and that's where CPM 3V does kind of lose its edge. It can crack and it can break if you're not careful with it. So you do need to be reasonably cautious uh, in that regard but at the same time the biggest thing I can recommend with things like 3V or S30V or any of your super steels is it really depends on how they are ground. In something like this BRK Bushcrafter, it has a Scandivex grind on it, so it's a Scandinavian grind, but it's been convexed to give the end cutting edge, like the very tip of the edge that actually contacts the material, a better stability and better um, wear resistance so with this blade i have you know without any problems without ever cracking chipping or breaking you know i've batoned this thing and it is a solid little piece of steel so it's really how it's ground but do be cautious because these steels are uh, just more brittle in general but like i said you are getting better edge retention than even a one or you know 1095 you're also getting better corrosion resistance so cpm 3v is certainly not the most corrosion resistant super steel but it is still a lot more corrosion resistant than 01 or 1095 by a long shot so you're getting like i said basically when you upgrade to a super steel better edge retention better corrosion resistance and usually just a overall more premium steel so a lot of the you know, uh, different factors that make a steel a steel are just basically uh, upped or upgraded with a super steel. So that's 3V. Now, it is definitely one of my favorites because of those reasons. Like I said, a steel that's less likely to rust is a little bit easier to upkeep in the field. And of course, edge retention is always preferable. Though do keep in mind that though you may have increased edge retention on your blade, you also have a blade that is harder to sharpen. So this is where things such as strops and stropping in the field and stropping your blade often become more important because if your blade does lose its edge, Edge, it'll be a lot harder to get it back than something like 5160 or 01 tool steel. 
then we have CPM S35VN. Now, something I forgot to mention about 3V and something about S35VN, though they are gaining more preeminence in the wilderness and bushcrafting knives as a whole, they still can be a little bit tricky to find. So the Bushcrafter is kind of a rare example of 3V, but there are things like the Cold Steel SRK in 3V, and there are SE is making knives in CPM S35VN. So these super steels are seeing a little bit more use and becoming a little bit more common in the field, but they are still a little tricky to find, though they can be found if you want to. So CPM S35VN, this steel is basically like CPM S30V, but with a lot more corrosion resistance. So this steel is definitely one that I would recommend using if you're working around water. This blade here is the CRK Pacific, so as you can kind of tell by the name, it's designed to be around water or used in and around salt water, though do be mindful if you use this around salt water, do be careful because it still will rust. This is not H1 or LCN or LC200N, you know, this isn't a super stainless steel. Um, this thing will still rust, but it has a lot more corrosion resistance than even uh, CPM 3V, and it has good solid edge retention. Not quite as much edge retention as 3V, but it has still definitely enough edge retention to, you know, be, it'll hold an edge much longer than 5160, 01, 1095, all of those steels this is going to outlast. Now, like I said, with 3V, uh, because it is a super steel, it is harder to sharpen, though uh, S35VN is not as hard as 3V to sharpen, but it is still going to be harder to sharpen than, um, you know, your non-super steels or your high carbon steels. So that is a disadvantage, but so long as you stay on top of your edge maintenance and you are, you know, stropping your steels, you're keeping them up, you know, you're keeping up with them, then you should be pretty well golden. So that is CPM S35VN. I would recommend using this steel if you are working around a lot more water or if you are, you know, like on a river, if you're by the ocean, this is probably going to be a better steel to choose for bushcrafting than something like 01 or 1095 or even 3V because 3V is a tool steel ultimately. So it is more corrosion resistant than a carbon steel, but not as corrosion resistant as something like 35VN or S35VN. So that's where I'd recommend using this type of steel. Um, and S35VN, or sorry, 3V, I would definitely recommend using if you're going to be in environments where they're reasonably dry and you're just looking for an upgraded steel that's going to hold its edge longer and be able to deliver just a higher performance than uh, 01 or 1095 or 5160. Okay guys, so that is basically all I have to say about steels, their different performances and their different uh, kind of functions, when and where I'd use them. Definitely your non-super steels are going to be easier to get into and they're going to be easier to afford. So if you're starting out in bushcrafting, you know, and you don't want to spend three, four hundred dollars on a premium knife with premium steel, you know, definitely start or, you know, look at beginning with some of these things like 5160, 1095 is also a pretty good option, but 01 and 5160 are definitely my favorites for bushcrafting. And uh, like I said, they can be a little bit harder to track down, but I think in the end, the end product is worth it. So as always guys, God bless and I'm out.